There are things we do without thinking almost every day. We shower, wash dishes, and flush the toilet. They are as natural and necessary as eating and sleeping, and just as automatic. We seldom think about what happens to the wastewater we create. From one in every five homes in America, the wastewater never leaves the property for treatment. These homes have an on-lot wastewater treatment system, a septic system that separates waste solids from liquids, retains the solids, renovates the liquid, and returns it to the ground right there in the yard. It is a very efficient system, but like any other major system in the house, sometimes things go wrong. Modern home buyers are very savvy about checking the condition of the home they are buying. They know to ask about the roof and the furnace. They have the house checked for pest infestations. They know who to call when something in the house fails. The septic system, however, is out of sight and out of mind. How can a home buyer tell if the septic system is in satisfactory condition? Like every other system in the home, the septic system needs routine maintenance. This is a task that can only be performed by a qualified, trained technician. When buying a home, only a trained, certified inspector can give you an accurate report of the system's condition. The Pennsylvania Septage Management Association, in conjunction with the National On-Site Foundation, have teamed up to prepare this informational presentation on the inspection and maintenance of septic systems. The disposal of human waste has always been a challenge. Moses included instructions to bury human waste in a hole in the ground when he wrote the Deuteronomic Laws. This practice prevailed for centuries. In downtown Philadelphia, Benjamin Franklin's privy pit is one of the last remaining parts of the home he and his wife designed and built in the mid-1700s. Some rural homes still have functioning outhouses. The Romans developed a means to flush waste away with water and they developed complex underground tunnels in their major cities to carry wastewater to the nearest river. As one might imagine, centuries of dumping waste in local rivers caused a tremendous pollution problem. In 1852, the Thames River smelled so bad, Parliament suspended their session in London. They demanded something be done about the river. The Health Ministry devised a means to separate waste solids from liquids, and the first septic system was installed. This new method for disposing of waste was quickly adopted worldwide. Large municipalities had to deal with large volumes of human waste, and they were forced to develop ways to clean sewage using mechanical and chemical processes. Outflow still goes into rivers and streams, but the water is clean. Homes outside major cities still had the problem of disposing of wastewater. Privy pits and outhouses were the best way to do that until septic systems came along. In the early 20th century, old homes were equipped with plumbing and modern flush toilets and a septic system on the property to dispose of the wastewater. These new septic systems would prove valuable in the housing boom that followed World War II. War veterans created the baby boom generation and families moved to the new suburbs by the thousands. Development was too fast for municipalities to keep up, though, and building sewer lines to these new developments was not always possible. Many new homes were built with septic systems as a temporary fix until city sewer lines could be put in. Ultimately, the cost of reaching all developments with city sewer became prohibitive, and the temporary septic system became the permanent solution for wastewater treatment for many homes. Each septic system is custom built for the house and lot it supports, so the components of an on-lot wastewater treatment system can vary widely. No matter the exact makeup of each system, every system has the same basic components. All septic systems perform their task using simple principles of biology and physics. Solid and liquid wastes are flushed into a large septic tank, shown here as a chocolate mix in a glass jar. Gravity carries the solid to the bottom of the tank. This sludge layer is slowly broken down by millions of anaerobic bacteria that occur naturally in human waste. The partially clarified liquid with a suspension of solid particles makes up the middle layer. The top layer of scum is composed of paper, grease and fats, foam from detergents and soap, and anything else that floats. 
The liquid layer in the tank maintains a fairly consistent level. As new material moves into the tank, an equal amount of partially clarified liquid moves from the tank into the absorption area. The liquid is now referred to as effluent. The movement of waste into the septic tank and the flow of effluent into the absorption area is primarily done by gravity in most systems. Some new systems and absorption techniques require electric pumps to move the effluent. The design of the absorption area varies widely based on a number of factors. The number of bedrooms in the home and the ability of the soil to absorb liquid are just some of the factors considered. Most absorption areas employ a layer of aggregate or small rocks to surround a series of perforated pipes. The effluent moves out of the pipe through the aggregate and into the underlying soil where the renovation process is completed by natural microbes and minerals. Eventually, fully renovated water makes its way back to the groundwater, ready for reuse. When all of these natural processes take place in the various components of the system, and when all of the physical, mechanical, and electrical components are functioning as intended, the system is described as satisfactory. Nearly all septic system components are underground, though, and determining the condition of the system requires specialized knowledge and training. In the late 1980s, a team composed of members of the Pennsylvania Septage Management Association, scientists from Penn State University, and several sewage enforcement officers addressed the issue of septic system inspections. They published the PSMA on-site wastewater treatment inspection guidelines and began training members on the application of these standards during inspections. In 2002, PSMA and the National On-Site Foundation formed an alliance to make PSMA's nationally recognized standards available to professionals everywhere. We're going to take this reserve space and calculate it out and, and then take this and calculate it out. PSMA standards and training provide a detailed step-by-step -step procedure for locating, identifying, and inspecting the system measuring and gathering data and determining whether each component of the septic system is performing as intended. Times three times three. Septic system professionals who wish to become certified and thus able to employ these standards Somebody. must complete an intense two-day training session. In the classroom, they learn the fundamentals of septic systems and the skills necessary to collect adequate data. Then they go into the field for hands-on training where they inspect working septic systems. At the end of their training session, they take a timed test of over 100 questions. The inspection begins long before the inspector arrives on the property. Inspectors or their support staff start collecting data during the initial call from the client. Much like a doctor gathering information about a patient's medical history, the inspector or office staff will ask the age of the house, the age of the septic system, the number of systems on the property, the number of people currently living in the house and the patterns of use, such as a vacation home used seasonally or year-round usage, the number of people moving into the house after ownership changes hands, the number of repairs done to the system and specifics about those repairs. Whether the washing machine or other water using appliances discharge into the system. Whether the sump pump or roof gutters discharge into the system. Whether the system is under a maintenance contract and if so, with whom. The date the system was last pumped. And finally, the inspector will ask for copies of permits for the septic system if they exist and will review them. When the inspector arrives on the property, he will locate the septic tank and open it for visual inspection. The inspector will flush all the toilets in the house to verify that the flows actually reach the tank. Next, the conditions in the tank will be determined and conditions in the absorption field may also be evaluated. Then the tank is pumped out. The sequence of pumping is critical because some aspects of the inspection must be done before the tank is pumped, while others must be done after the tank is empty. For instance, the flows in and out of the tank can only be evaluated when the tank is at its proper operating level, but it is impossible to see through the waste to examine the walls of the tank. The inspection follows the flow of waste and effluent. If the system has multiple tanks, each one is inspected. If there are pumps in the system, they are also inspected to verify the proper operation of the pump 
control systems, and alarms. Continuing downstream, the inspector will determine the type, location, and size of the absorption area. The inspector will use probes to determine whether there is any water present in the aggregate, and if so, measure the depth of the dry aggregate. The type of absorption area used for each individual system will determine just how it is inspected, since each technology has its own unique qualities that must be checked. When the inspection is complete, the inspector will have detailed notes on the type, capacity, location, condition, and operation of the tank or tanks and their use at that particular system. The type, location, size, condition, and operation of the absorption area, and the type, condition, and operation of any electrical components. The inspector also makes observations regarding the location of the absorption area relative to the house and notes conditions that might impact its operation. The inspector considers all the information gathered and, applying the standards and his professional judgment, training, and experience, reports one of four conclusions to the client. More investigation is needed. The inspector could not locate one or more of the components using hand tools or there are other conditions that will require further investigation. For instance, the lid to this septic tank is covered by a wooden sidewalk. The homeowner has been asked to have a portion of the sidewalk removed so the tank can be inspected. Unsatisfactory. The inspector has discovered one or more components which are, by definition, unsatisfactory based on the application of PSMA NOF standards. There are a number of situations that could cause an unsatisfactory report, such as a cracked septic tank wall that is leaking waste into the surrounding soil. Satisfactory with concerns. The inspector has found some characteristic of the system that has caused some concerns, which he feels the need to call to the attention of the client. Satisfactory. The inspector has reached this conclusion when there are no conditions evident that would result in any other conclusion. The on-site wastewater treatment system inspection standards were developed by the Pennsylvania Septage Management Association and are continually refined. These standards are applied by inspectors certified by both the PSMA and the National On-Site Foundation. The PSMA NOF program is the only one of its kind in the nation that offers home buyers a well-trained inspector applying a sound, reliable standard that prescribes conclusions and eliminates guesswork. The inspector's knowledge is kept up to date through required periodic continuing education. The nationally recognized comprehensive inspection offered by PSMA certified inspectors enables the home buyer to make informed choices about one of the most costly yet least visible systems in the home, a system that can dramatically affect the home's livability and saleability. To find a PSMA certified inspector, visit psma.net. And remember, you will live in your new home a long time. It is your biggest investment, and it's in your best interest to insist on the best inspection available. Insist on a PSMA NOF inspection.